In many analysis books that present why a compact set in a metric space is both closed and bounded, their proofs are kind of long. Here, we're gonna give shorter proofs of why both of these facts are true, so stay tuned. Hey, welcome to today's video, I'm Prof Omar, and today we're gonna to talk about why compact sets are both bounded and closed in metric spaces. Now, in many textbooks and analysis, the proofs of these actually inherit the proofs from topological spaces, which are more general than metric spaces. And so their proofs have a little bit more of a lengthy process to them because they don't have as much to work with. And we're gonna exploit the fact that we're in metric spaces to do this. Okay, but remind me what each of these moving pieces are. Like, what's the contact set again, and the bounded, and the closed, and the... Just remind me of the stuff. Okay, so we're gonna remind ourselves of the definitions of these things and place them on the board right over here so that we have use of them while we're trying to prove these. So first of all, compactness, recall, means that if you have S sitting inside of the union of a bunch of open sets U alpha, then you can find a finite collection of them that S sits inside. Boundedness, we can think about it saying you have this set and it's enclosed inside of a large enough ball. So there's a point in your metric space and a radius greater than zero so that your set sits inside of the ball of radius R centered at this point that you chose, right? So the picture here is you have your blob S you pick some point and there's this ball of radius R where your set sits inside of. And finally, the definition of closed, which we're gonna think about as actually as the complement of open. So open is the one really that we're gonna functionally use. And a set is open if for any point inside of the set, you can find a positive radius so that the ball of that radius centered at this point that you chose sits inside of the set. So the picture here again is you have this set S, you pick a point inside, there's a ball of a certain radius R that stays inside of the set. So if we were like whatever here, you can pick a ball like this and stay inside of the set as well. And a closed set is one whose complement is open. Great, so let's actually prove these things in a simpler form than what's presented in most books using these definitions. So we'll start with proving that any compact set is bounded. So I'm gonna draw a picture here of our set S. And somehow we wanna prove that this thing is enclosed inside of a ball. And using the fact that any open cover has to have a finite subcover. Now, if we made these open sets somehow open balls, then a bunch of open balls sitting inside of each other might be enclosed in a bigger open ball. One way we could do this is pick just some arbitrary point. I'll just pick a point right over here and think about balls of different radii starting with counting numbers. So maybe a ball of radius one and then a ball of radius two, a ball of radius three, etc. Okay, if we keep doing this, we'll have an infinite number of balls and they actually cover the whole metric space because we'll have balls of arbitrary radii, right? So we'll have something like this, S sitting inside of the union, N equals one to infinity of the ball of radius N centered at P because this union of open balls actually is the entire metric space X. So this union actually is an open cover of our set. Because our set is compact, there's a finite subcover. So there's a finite number of these balls that cover S. We can write that as saying S is inside of the union of B N one of P up to B sub N capital N of P, where these are the finite balls that form our finite subcover. Now these are all balls of radius N1, N2, up to N sub capital N respectively centered around this point P. 
right? So if we order them by radii, whatever the largest is, let me call it R, being the maximum of all these radii, the ball of radius R centered at P will have S sitting inside of it because the, that ball will be one of these balls actually. And it'll contain all the other balls because they have the same center and smaller radii. So S sits inside of this one particular ball right here, centered at P, meaning by the definition of boundedness that this set S actually is bounded. So a really nice proof. The usual proof inherited from topology considers balls all over the place, right? When we can pick balls centered at one point because we can actually quantify radii because we're actually in a metric space. Great, so now let's move on to proving that a compact set has to be closed. Again, taking advantage of the fact that we're actually in a metric space. All right, so now we wanna prove that our compact set in a metric space is actually closed. And again, we'll use our heuristic of having this set S sitting inside of here. And if we wanna prove that the set is closed, it's equivalent to proving its complement is open. To prove its complement is open, we need to show that for any point that is in the complement, we have a radius, a ball, uh, some radius, so that the ball of that radius around that point sits inside of the complement. So we're picking like a point outside here, right? And we need to know that there's an open ball around it that stays outside of S. So how do we go about doing that using the fact that S is compact? So our strategy is to think about the fact that this point is separated from S and actually quantify how separated it is. So what we're gonna do is separate this point X from S by constructing different balls of different radii. A way to do that is for every counting number N, we'll take the ball of radius one over n centered at x. Okay, um, so this is an open ball. I'm gonna take the closure of it so it's a closed ball. So this thing looks something like this. Now we're gonna consider the complement of that set. So that looks something like taking the point x, and looking at all the points that are away from X, quantified by this radius right over here. The open ball of radius one over N is open. We closed it, that's closed, and the complement of that is consequently open. So this thing is an open set. I'm gonna give it a name because it looks kind of complicated. Maybe let's call it S sub one over N of X. And we think about S sub one over N of X as being this open set that contains all the points that are radius greater than one over N from the point X. Okay, great. So if we increase N, so we take the N equals one to infinity and take the union of all of these things, what would we get? Well, these are the points that are at least one over n away from x for some n. That's every single point in the metric space besides x. If I pick a point like right over here, let's say p, then I can always pick some very, 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 very small ball here by picking n to be large enough, and p will be inside of sn for that consequent small ball. Okay, so this set here is actually the entire metric space with X removed. Okay, but X itself does not lie inside of our set S. So S is a subset of this set here. So S actually sits as the inside of the union of this infinite number of open sets. But S is compact, so that means S sits inside of the union of a finite number of these. Let's call them S1 and one of X up to S one over N capital N of X. So again, one of these radii is gonna be smallest. So the picture we have here is we have our point X, our set S, and then let's just assume that these are ordered so that this is the smallest of the reciprocals and this is the largest. So we have 
this one over N1 here and everything outside of it. Then we have one over N2 and everything outside of it, but that's subsumed by the first ball. So this actually all sits inside of S N1 of X. We're saying there's a separation from X that looks something like this, and S is inside of everything outside of it. Okay, great. So what that means then is there is an open ball around X that sits outside of S. If we take a ball of radius half of this thing, then the open ball centered at X with that radius sits outside of S. Okay, so what did we just do here? We picked the point X to begin with that was outside of S and we found an open ball around it that sits outside of S as well. So that means that S complement is open, which means that S itself is closed. Now a typical proof that relies on just the topological approach, again, does not consider just one random point outside, but does something a little bit more fancy that requires a little bit of work to get around. So again, the whole point of this was to use the power of the fact that we're in metric spaces and not just topological spaces to give proofs of these facts of compact sets being bounded and closed in metric spaces.